South Africa is officially in a second wave of COVID-19, heading towards one million positive cases identified. And to make matters worse, a new variant of the virus has been found here. There's no proof that the mutation is more deadly than the COVID-19 variant behind the first wave, but it may be spreading faster. South Africa recorded an additional 10,939 new cases in the last 24-hour period. To discuss, we're now joined by senior researcher at CSIR, Dr. Ridwan Suleiman. Uh, doctor, thank you for being with us and, and you always bring us these beautiful uh, graphs to, to display uh, what's going on. So, so let's start with, with the first one, just looking at the daily cases. You, you can see, uh, we'll bring that up, you can see the first peak and then the second peak. It, it's not as high, but you can see the second peak there trending very high and we're all trying to understand this new variant. Just, just tell us what this graph says to you. Good afternoon, Francis. Um, yes, indeed, we, we are um, definitely within our second wave. Um, I think we're still trending upwards, there's no doubt about that. Um, and currently we're seeing, um, if we look at a seven-day average, um, our, we, we had 8,500 new cases per day um, on a national level. Um, that figure is, is increasing and increasing quite rapidly. Um, it's up over 60% uh, when compared to the past week. Um, it's mostly being driven by the four big provinces, uh, Western Cape, uh, KwaZulu-Natal, um, Eastern Cape, although that is slowing down, and, and Gauteng uh, more recently. Um, also, of course, we need to bear in mind that the case numbers are uh, limited by the amount of testing that we do. Um, and uh, because of the high test positivity rate, um, these numbers are still an underestimate um, of what the actual um, numbers are on the, or the reality on the ground. Yeah. All right, and I'll ask you to explain that shortly. But first, if we stay on this, this graph that we had up, uh, on, on the first peak, uh, at, at the height of it, on the, the first wave, at the peak, we were heading towards uh, 13,000 cases a day. There you can see as an average. When do you think we will uh, see that figure and, and surpass it in the second wave? It's difficult to fully predict. Um, as we saw in the first wave and as we're currently seeing, um, the spread, uh, the timing and the rate of the spread is varying in the different provinces. Um, in the second wave, it started in the Eastern Cape, moved to the Western Cape. Um, now KwaZulu-Natal and Gauteng is picking up. Um, during the peak of our first um, wave, uh, it was when the spread was, was rising most rapidly in the most populous province, that being Gauteng. Uh, we yet to see the spread um, really, the second wave really move into Gauteng. And I think when, when we do um, see, see the infections rates, rates rise in Gauteng, that's probably when, when we'll see nationally the numbers um, rising to, to the highest level. Uh, we probably need to monitor more closely at a provincial level um, and even at districts uh, because, as I said, the, the timing and, and the rate um, varies in the different provinces. Yeah. Uh, are you willing to, to say what, what many scientists are, that this could be worse, the second wave? Um, I, I do think so. Um, uh, again, it's difficult to, to, to be 100% sure, but um, given that we, in the second wave, uh, working uh, or coming from a higher base. We never really went down to zero infections. We were averaging 15 to 1,500 to 2,000. So we're starting at a higher base. We're also seeing a more rapid rise um, in the second wave as compared to the first wave. Um, and the, as you mentioned, there's been some, um, some reports and announcements about the um, variant or a, ver a new strain of the COVID-19, which is spreading more rapidly or, or perhaps has a higher transmissibility rate, uh, but, and also within the lower age, uh, age groups. Um, so those are indications that the second wave will in all likelihood um, go well beyond what we saw in the first wave. All right. Let's pick up on what you said on testing now, and we'll bring up a graph uh, looking sort of at the, the average tests. Obviously, the infection rate is linked uh, to, to the amount of testing that can be done. And, and you uh, hinted that there, there may be a shortage uh, there. There's still talk of excess deaths the, the first time around that weren't being picked up because of testing. Just tell us what, what the graph uh, tells you. 
Well, if we look at the graph, we can see that currently um, a seven-day average again uh, shows us that the average number of tests that we're doing per day um, across the country is around 40,000 at the moment. Um, this has been steadily increasing over the past few weeks, uh, mostly due to the demand for testing, uh, more, more people requiring tests. Um, it's also uh, due, partly due to the inclusion of the antigen tests, uh, which have started recently. Um, the number of tests that we can we're currently conducting um, still isn't quite as high as what we were at during the first uh, the peak of the first wave um, and also importantly um, as mentioned the percentage of of, of these tests that are uh, returning positive results is also on the increase um, currently at around 21 percent um, and moving towards the 25 percent mark meaning for every four to five tests that we're conducting we're finding a positive case meaning we have to do a lot more tests to, to get the real picture. That's what you're saying. Precisely. Um, we, we really want to have positivity rates below 5%, um, ideally, and we never really went below that level for, for a long time. Um, and only when we test widely um, and, and, and increase the number of tests quite significantly can we um, bring that test positivity rate down. Um, of course, we do need to bear in mind that there are costs associated with, with these tests um, and that, that is uh, a factor. But um, currently, we're not using the testing as a uh, tool to get ahead of the curve, but more as a diagnostic measure just to confirm um, that someone has been infected. Yeah. All right, so, so the tests, uh, a question mark there. Let's look at the provinces. Uh, doctor, run us through the daily incidence rates per province, and, and we'll bring that graph up. You, you'll see uh, that the Eastern Cape is high, but look at the Western Cape, that blue line uh, sort of running up, up, up. Uh, so, so, so that means that's the, the real worry. Am I correct? Absolutely. Um, the Western Cape currently, um, the incidence rate is 40, or the daily incidence rate currently is 42 people per 100,000 people in that province. Um, now, as you can see from, from the graph in that blue line, um, it's higher than what we saw in the first wave. Um, and it's also higher than any of the other provinces saw. Um, and it's not showing currently any signs of slowing down. Um, so that is a concern. Um, following the Western Cape is KwaZulu-Natal, um, uh, the black line um, on the graph. Um, that particular um, province, the incidence rate is currently 20 new cases per 100,000 people. And that's up by 70% 70, 70 compared to the previous week. Um, Gauteng is also increasing quite quickly. Um, the good news is we're starting to see a slowdown in the Eastern Cape. Um, and that uh, incidence rate has gone down by 7% uh, when compared to this time last week. Um, so there is perhaps some hope on the horizon. All right, and we will be speaking to the mayor of Nelson Mandela Bay, saying that's due to sort of joint efforts, everybody uh, in that area pulling together. Let's move to hospitalizations. The point of the first hard lockdown, remember, was to prepare our hospitals. Uh, can we weed anything into the fact uh, that, that the hospital um, sort of admissions don't seem as bad as, as they were in the first wave yet? Let, let's just bring up the graph. Sure. Um, so on this particular graph, we're looking at new hospitalizations um, across South Africa. Um, currently, um, we sh we're seeing that that's just over 5,500 um, uh, in the last week. Uh, and that number has increased by over 40% compared to the previous week, um, essentially meaning that more people uh, are requiring hospitalization uh, as compared to the previous week. Um, we won't quite get a full picture if we look at the national num numbers. Uh, what if we zoom into the provincial uh, level, we'll see that this um, number is being driven by an increase in hospitalizations in the Eastern Cape, um, as well as the Western Cape, um, and lately KwaZulu-Natal and Gauteng. Um, so I think that gives a better indication if you want to compare to the first wave. Um, and also as a comparison, both the Eastern Cape and Western Cape are currently seeing more new hospitalizations or higher number of hospitalizations as compared to what they saw in the first wave.
Yeah, I understand what you're saying because uh, not all the provinces are fully engulfed in the second wave yet. So, so we may see that figure go up. Uh, is it still just completely um, unclear in, in terms of this new variant of COVID-19 if you're more likely or less likely to be hospitalized, more likely or less likely to, to die? So from, from what I've heard and what I understand as a non-medical expert, we don't have sufficient data to make any of, of those conclusions this yet. Um, what, what the experts have indicated is that the new variant is perhaps more transmissible. Um, in other words, um, it's spreading at, at a faster rate. Um, this could be due to this particular variant having a higher viral uh, load or higher load shedding, um, or that less of an infectious dose is required uh, for someone before they get infected yeah. um, or also it could be more environmentally stable but there's no indication and a lot more research is done um, to is needed to be done to to indicate the severity of the virus and whether um, more people require hospitalizations or even succumb to the virus all right, let's bring up the average um, death rates right, right now. Uh, what, what are the trends that you can see from this graph? Sure. Um, so both hospitalizations, which we looked at um, now, as well as the deaths are lagging indicators. Um, so they lag the case numbers by uh, two weeks and four weeks, more or less, respectively. The average deaths um, across South Africa are on the increase. Um, currently, the seven day average, um, the daily average of reported deaths is is about 180 per day. Um, and that number has been also increasing following the trend that we saw in cases, and it's up over 30% um, as compared to the previous week. Um, again, if we zoom in on this, we see that this is driven mostly by um, reported deaths in the Eastern Cape and Western Cape following their increase in cases. We're starting to see a significant rise in, in the death numbers in KwaZulu-Natal now as well. Yeah. Well, well let's end there. Let's um, return to hospitals and zone in on the Eastern Cape specifically. That's where um, we, we know some of the troublesome hospitals are. Uh, but like you said, the, the province trending down. Uh, we'll look at Nelson Mandela Bay. Just, just tell us about those trends at the moment. Sure. So hospitalizations in the Eastern Cape have been increasing for um, at least the past nine weeks now. Um, what the numbers are starting to indicate is that while they're still increasing, the rate of increase is slowing down. Um, and you can see it's starting to, to trend towards a plateau. Um, what the numbers don't indicate is whether this is um, due to um, the hospitals reaching capacity or whether this is a true reflection that um, the number of people requiring hospitalizations has slowed down um, following a similar trend that we saw in the case numbers um, in the Eastern Cape. All right, something to put to the mayor of Nelson Mandela Bay, who we'll be speaking to shortly. Thank you very much. Uh, illuminating graphs and analysis by Dr. Ridwan Suleiman.